Welcome to Podband Pipecast, the premier Pipecast pod band in the world. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one of the two of those words that were out of place, but that's okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone to Podband Pipecast, the premier pipe band podcast. Gotta say it because you you said it wrong. Oh. Yeah, it's I'm okay. You're cut. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's the point of it, right? That's but the first uh, pipe band podcast uh, that I've done. So, yeah, this yeah. is pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, everyone, this is Cody Nunez, who's my brother and also our drum sergeant. And this is a really exciting episode because it marks almost not quite to the day or the week or anything like that, but almost um, at the point of this recording, one year. Well, pretty much one year since you became the drum sergeant, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a little over a year now. Um, I guess technically I was given this opportunity in December of 2018. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll talk about today's episode is going to be a lot about like that transition and how um, how that came about and how it's been going from just a a dude playing a drum to the the one telling everyone else what to play. <laughs> Main so, dude playing a drum. Main dude. The, the dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get right into some questions though about your uh, your earlier career, and we'll we'll get to that. Yeah. yeah. So, how did you get involved in pipe band? Um, yeah, so that's that's been a story as well. Um, as uh, Kaylee mentioned, she's my sister, and you know, growing up in the band. Uh, Chris Hosick is our uncle. He's the pipe major. Dave Hosick, the formal, former drum sergeant, um, he's our other uncle. Um, our mom, Diane, she's the pipe sergeant. Um, ultimately, we uh, were at every games, uh, a lot of the shows, just kind of around the band, immersed in the uh, the culture of it, and um, kind of grew up with everyone in, in Mesa, Caledonian, as our family. Um, and so it was kind of one of those where, you know, we're, we're there all the time as it was and kind of decided over time, you know, I kind of want to be involved in this too. So uh, for myself, I wanted to pick up the sticks and kind of got into it from a young age there. Uh, I started taking lessons at like five years old, I think it was, from uh, Dave. So, Hey, uh, Kaylee, how old did you say you were when you started? I was 10. So why did you start at five? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it didn't really uh, stick, you know. It's... Like, like drumstick? Yeah, oh, exactly, I right? Yeah. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so at five, it's just kind of hard to focus. So I took, I don't even know how long it was that I took lessons. It very Maybe a few, a um, long time ago to remember. But, you know, ultimately, I didn't, I didn't get back into it until I was like 12, 13. And then I really kept it from there. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What uh, made you want to play snare in the first place? Um, you know, I'm I'm honestly not sure at the time. Um, it could have been something as simple as looking around and, you know, maybe the band needed snares and they said, hey, do you want to play this instrument before the pipes? I know I did start with uh, take a few pipe lessons when I was younger and um, it just didn't interest me, I guess, as much as the, the drumming aspect did. So I'd always been interested in the percussion side, you know, growing up. But uh, that being said, even then, I didn't pursue any other instruments or any instruments very far through school. So it's always just pretty much been pipe band for me. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel like definitely growing up where you're, one of your parents plays pipes, you're always, people are always asking, like, why don't you play bagpipes? Like, what? Why, why'd you turn out to be a drummer? What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it is weird. And even at games and stuff, I don't know mm -hmm. how many games it's like, hey, oh, so you play pipes and I've got the sticks in my sock there. And like, I don't play pipes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> that's probably my favorite part about telling people you play yeah. tenor in a pipe band. Oh, you play pipes. And yeah. It's like, no. Yeah, not at all. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got it down. I've, I've been telling people lately I play the tenor drum in a Scottish bagpipe and drum band. So you yeah. play the pipes? <laughs> I was have to and add you that still get that qualifier, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz otherwise, yeah, people don't understand. Yeah. So, 2019 was your first season as drum sergeant. How'd you like it? Um, I it was great. A lot of uh a lot of fun. Um, I think ultimately like 
growing up in this in the band um growing up around pipe bands you see and you you watch other bands you um hear about things and roles of different positions whether it's pipe major or drum sergeant or whatever it may be and it's hard to like really appreciate the gravity of what the position means um and how much how much work goes into it because you know you see it's it's a lot more than just oh the drum sergeant kind of just he plays the lead part and then the side drummers match him right and is what it looks like if you're just looking outside the circle but i mean there's um you know score writing we're making sure that everyone else has the tools they need to succeed um working with people outside of practice uh you know helping out with how the midsection is uh fitting with the pipe core, working with the pipe core to make sure that, you know, what we're doing matches what they're doing. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a ton to it. It's, it's been a blast, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's a wild ride for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did that all happen? How did your transition come about? Uh, so ultimately, uh, the previous drum sergeant, you know, my uncle, our uncle Dave, uh, he was, he was in the process of getting a new job and that job was going to be very demanding, a lot of travel. He was going to miss a lot of practice and even a couple of games. So, you know, he's him and I were talking like, well, what, you know, what can we do? This is in December of uh, 2018, like I mentioned. And uh, it's like, well, I'm going to have this job. It's really going to hit hard in like uh, May. So I can probably get through these first, this first games here, at Queen Mary. And then I'm going to kind of have to, you know, find something else. And I said, well, I mean, yeah, I'd be happy to take the, take the role on at this point and just, you know, run with it, do my best at it. Um, it's, you know, not knowing, I guess how, how much more work that would be, but at the same time, I'm thinking, well, there's December and January, and then I have, we have Queen Mary, and then it's just like a, a train, a huge run of games all the way through the European championships in Scotland. And I'm like, there's really not much time. Like, there's no way I can, I can jump into this role in like March and then end up where we need to be even close by June. So jumped right in there. Um, he's like, sure, let's do it that way. So I got some like um, mentorship during that transition, which was nice. And then kind of made it, made it my thing going forward. So it was, uh, it was great. I mean, the, the transition was really smooth that way. It's kind of like, here you go. And um, really been really appreciative of uh all you both, everybody here, um, the uh, drum corps as a whole for kind of embracing that. Cause I know it's tough, yeah. like, you know, anywhere they talk, well, it's like you move someone's cheese, right? Everyone, <laughs> even like, you know, Dave was probably, he was my main instructor, my main source of influence in this, in this type of drumming, but we still have our differences in leadership style and playing and uh, everyone just kind of jumped on board and, and it was great. So. Yeah. That's a crazy thing. Cause, um, Dave was the drum sergeant for how long did we say? Oh. I don't even remember. It, it's yeah. been a long time. It's been since like 30 plus yeah. years, really. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. it went before even like Mesa Caledonian was Mesa Caledonian. I mean, before that, uh -huh. it was like Mesa City Band, White Cockade, right? And he was, you know, for a lot of the time through that, too. So it's been a long tenure for sure. <laughs> yeah. So that can definitely be weird. Like, Hey, he's not the guy anymore. You know, it's you gotta mm -hmm. listen to someone else. Now, who's this guy over here? We yeah. don't know yeah. this guy. <laughs> yeah, but it's at the same time, it's more, you know, we're all in it for the common goal, right? Which is to play good music and get better, better ourselves, better everybody, and hopefully, hopefully, grow the community. I mean, that's really what we're interested in here, right? Is you know, anything we do, we want to make sure that this community gets stronger and larger, especially in Arizona. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so knowing what you know now, would there, I know you said it was a smooth transition, but mm -hmm. you would have, would you have done anything differently? Would you have not offered to take that spot? <laughs> oh, um, hindsight no. is 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, hindsight is 2020. Um, it's like one of those things, right? Like i I wouldn't trade a minute of it for the world. It was a great time. Um, I said ton of work, a lot of learning experiences, um, I'm, I'm, there probably would, there, I know for sure, there'd be a lot of things I would do differently. I would have done differently. Um, but then again, from the way I'm doing things now and, and I'm saying I'm going to do things going forward, 
if you ask me in five years about today, mm-hmm. I'd probably have the same things like, gosh, Cody, you don't do that. You know <laughs> what I mean? And now I think it's a good idea, right? So. Right. Do you want to get anything into anything specifically that was like a huge challenge for you? Um, no, I, I guess at the beginning, like, like I mentioned about the drum sergeant's role, I guess I wish I would have been more involved in, um, and I'm not just saying this because you all are here. I wish I would have been more involved <laughs> with like the midsection side of things. Cause it really like having a transition from like December to like Queen Mary was the first games in February. I was like, let's roll. I got to get the uh, lead part down. I got to memorize the breaks. I got to get all that stuff going. And it was mainly just like a frantic thing to like, I knew like you all have it down. You're good. And then I was just focused on the snare line. Mm-hmm. So I think that'd probably be the main thing is like, you know, now going forward, it's, it's a drum core perspective. It's not, it's the snare line and it's the tenor and bass core. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, and even then, like now I'm sensitive to things that I wasn't so much before where I'm really listening to, you know what, like how is the pipe section consistently playing these tunes, like the Strass bass, the reel, so forth. How are they expressing them? It, is it changing from one week to the next? Maybe sometimes like, why is it changing? So I'm like interested in getting to that conversation um how are the tempos holding you know where are we at as opposed to before it was just like hurry up we got to get clean we got to get this down we got to you know get ready for the games so yeah, holistic so, approach yeah you're more playing music now whereas before you're playing scores right right yeah, that's the goal yes mm-hmm. yeah um what is the biggest difference when it comes to being a drum sergeant versus being a drummer in the line from your perspective actually can we talk about those roles real quick what, yeah. what is a drummer in the line what is a drum sergeant? Yeah, so I guess... Tell me what a chips is. Chips, <laughs> yeah. So you hear us talk a lot about chips, right? So chips are the uh, the term we use for the uh, response side of the call and response of our, uh, of our drumming, right? So historically, you know, in regimental drumming, you would have one drummer, he would play a number of, uh, you know, he would play something. And then he would have other drummers respond, call and response. So the chips are the response side of it. Um, the the difference, you know, I'm playing the whole time where the side drummers are coming in in specific points of emphasis. And those are the places we like to refer to as chips. So chips is when you're playing, everyone's playing. Right. Yeah. So you'd hear like, you know, if you're watching like a snare line play or you're listening to them, you'll hear one. If you're just listening, then it's might be more difficult hopefully it's hopefully it's super clean and all you hear is a volume change right so ultimately you'll hear one drummer playing or you'll see one drummer playing the whole time that's usually the drum sergeant um and then at certain points all the other drummers will jump in at the same time um and that's usually like the first round through a part then on the repeat then everybody typically will play at the same time so that's probably one of the big differences when you're um when you're a person in the line you're not playing the whole time when you're the drum sergeant you're playing all the time right 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 and i guess as as far as like roles it's kind of it's kind of a mixed bag right so um having been a side drummer for i mean it was a solid 10 years um as opposed to just being a uh you know a lead drummer over the last year or a, a drum sergeant excuse me um Really, as a, as a side drummer, your main focus is matching your lead drummer. Um, there could be any manner of chaos going around around you. Your one job is to match your drum sergeant, your lead drummer playing. So um, from that perspective, that's that's like really easy to say. That's easy. Right. You have yeah. one job. <laughs> yeah. Um, the biggest thing is just, if you have a style like Dave and I have a very, very close, similar style. I mean, from playing together for years, I said he was my instructor. Um, it was very easy for me to match any of the time I could pretty much do it not even paying attention. I could just be matching what he's playing. I don't know how it just happens. You play with someone (laughs) long enough. Um, but you know, it's other drummers don't have that luxury. You know, if they come from a different style of playing, um, or they're just, you know, it's the music is maybe right at their skill level. They're having to struggle to match 
or everybody struggles to match when there's, you know, a tempo issue and the lead drummer is trying to match the pipes and it's getting to be some push pull going on that, that can really lead to some problems. But, um, yeah, that's the main role of like a side drummer in the, in the snare line. The drum sergeant has thousands of things going on <laughs> at any one time in his mind. Um, not counting like leading up to the line, leading up to the circle when you're actually competing. Um, as a lead drummer, you're concerned about um, like as we're playing, you know, I'm playing with the pipes. I'm making sure I'm on on top of the beat. You know, I'm watching the pipe major. I'm making sure that, you know, we're hitting the brakes. Um, I'm making sure we're emphasizing like following their idioms because that's been a you know problem in the past where, you know, things get a little bit you know, the tempo goes up a little bit and everything starts to round out and oh crap, like we've our Strass Bay, it's not going to match. So now I've got to tweak how I'm playing so the ensemble doesn't go to complete heck there. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's a grueling job, I would say it's a lot different. Um, but I, I must admit, I guess having a similar style to the previous lead drummer, Dave, or lead, previous drum sergeant, it was, it was easier for me to be a side drummer, but mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy the challenge. So what has been um, your biggest challenge, speaking of that, in mm. your past year as drum sergeant? Oh, biggest challenge. Um, I, would tr I would say, like, you know, just that, like, that big picture focus of the band and the, the drum corps and the band as a whole. Um, and just being able to, you know, for there's been a lot of little challenges that have stacked up to that big challenge, I guess I should say. So it was number one, it was like, you know, understanding th simple things for most other drum sergeants. Like how is my pipe major? How is Chris like calling the breaks? How is he conducting the band? How, you know, what tempos can I expect and how do I expect those deviations? If there are any, um, how do I efficiently run practice? You know, that's, that was one of the first things, you know, how do I make sure that we're, you know, we're nailing all of our points and playing musical and, and getting our contrast and getting it clean, you know, working out that, those bugs too. Um, so that all those things kind of just added up into the, the big challenge, I guess, of being a drum sergeant. So it's just like so many things, right? But yeah. Yeah. For people who, um, we were talking about this a little bit before we started. People who are trying to make that transition, um, and this is part of the point of these, this episode, kind of, maybe there's someone out there who is a lead drummer, but may not be, as you said, a lead drummer, but maybe not be a drum sergeant, or may mm -hmm. just be realizing like, oh, crap, there's more, yeah. you know, that I could improve upon as a leader. Um, what tips would you have for people like that? Um, I would say just that, right? Like you just, you mentioned leader, right? And, um, I think the biggest thing is to be cognizant of that. Cause I mean, we always have like leadership as a whole is extremely important in whatever you do, if it's at your work, um, in home life, uh, in a pipe band. So it's being really cognizant of how you are working with people. Right. And, and the biggest difference is like you lead people or you manage people. Right. And you always lead people because, you know, unlike work or a job situation, people don't have to be here, you mm -hmm. know, if they don't like you, they'll leave, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So it's like, you have to, you know, want to make this a fun place to be, but at the same time you want to be very productive. So I would say just finding that like leadership style mind, like try to lead by example. I try to be right there with everyone in there. You know, if, if I'm saying, Hey, like I expect we practice every day, you know, I'm practicing every day, you know? And so it's kind of just those little things. Um, I would say consistency is key. Um, doing the same things the same ways and and what i mean by that is um you know we have practice at a certain time every week it's the same time every week we add practices here and there for sure um but it's it's little things like that 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 help out like create a stable situation i think for everybody um the other thing i would say is just being really attentive to um everyone's like abilities, commitment level, and like goals, right? Cause it's not, you know, if my, if it's solely my goal to go in there and like, we're going to just, you know, play, compete to win. And that's our only goal and be a grade one pipe band. And like, that's, if that's my, if I'm the only one driving that goal, 
it doesn't help anybody, right? Or if mm -hmm. the opposite's true and everybody else wants that as their goal and I'm not in on that, you know, it's not, it doesn't help it, right? right. <laughs> so um, really, and my, my vision is that as a leader, as a drum sergeant, you know, I make sure that I'm setting the goals to make sure everyone's vision is fulfilled. And then I make sure that we're on that path to achieve those goals. Yeah. Um, yeah. What has been your most rewarding moment this past year as a drum sergeant? Most rewarding moment. Um, it would have to be probably, you know, just like when we, you know, we've, we've done a lot of these, these contests over the last year and just seeing the tremendous improvement, I guess, and just seeing like uh, how excited people are, you mm -hmm. know, everyone seems so stoked to be here and um, it's just so, f so rewarding, you know, to see like the hard work paying off. So it's just like last week I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, like how many people are showing up? They're jazzed to be there. I mean, we practice Fridays at seven, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody works, you know, it's like you show up to practice and everyone's tired, but then, you know, a switch flips and everyone's like, yeah, let's do this, you know? And that's just, yeah, I was saying that's, that's probably the main thing. Yeah. I remember um, when we played, when we competed at the European Championships and we walked out the field and we all knew we were not, you know, the, the, we were not playing at, oh, this is, you know, this is fantastic. We're a grade one band. Like we knew we were not at that kind of level, but we felt like we had played the best that we had in the longest time that I can remember. And we were all just so jazzed and so like excited about it. And like now we're playing now better than we were then. Mm -hmm. And I just think By that's far. so incredible because that feeling of like marching out and then like knowing, oh, that was a good run. I, I feel really good about that. And then knowing that you still have so far to go, like no, no offense to anyone, but we still had so far to go. And now we see that we're going even farther with it. It's just, that's an incredible feeling. Right. Yeah. It's a long journey for sure. A lot of work that we've done, a lot of work left to do. Um, but it's, it's marked improvement. And like the main thing, you know, every time you go out, whether it's every Friday at practice, um, you know, you just play better than last week, play better than last week. And you just keep moving the bar up, moving the bar up, you know, you just cannot lose ground and uh, build some momentum and then keep it up. So, yeah. Well, this is good. I can't wait for, um, we're making this recording now and then I can't wait for another, you know, two, three years to go by and like, oh, would, would you say something different? Would we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait for, for that to happen to see, to see where we go with mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's that it for this episode, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll be back next week with uh, Cody again and he's going to talk more about snare drumming specifically and what that means goodbye right on. yeah see you next week thank you all bye thanks for listening everyone if you enjoyed this show then support us on patreon for exclusive content as well as the video of us recording this we'll have special exercises we'll be writing as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come um, subscribe to us on youtube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on um, and like us on Facebook at Podband Podcast.